Good evening, my listening friends. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Wednesday night service. We are at the Central SDA Church in the Virgin Islands. We want to also welcome those who are uh, joining us on various platforms. We pray that God would grant you a blessing, and that we all will be edified and we will have a closer walk with Christ tonight. So again, I say welcome to everyone. I invite you to bow your heads with me wherever you are as we ask the Lord's presence to be in our midst. Shall we pray? Our gracious Father, we thank you for the blessings of the day, the privilege that you have given to us that we can come into your house of worship to spend time at the feet of Jesus. And so we invite thy Holy Spirit presence to be in our midst. We pray that you will bless tonight's service. May it bring honor and glory to your holy name. May we live here edified and be energized as we go through the rest of the week. And so, Lord, we ask that your spirit will bless us and that you would help us to be drawn closer to you. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Tonight's mess, this evening's message is entitled Prayer in the Time of Trouble. Prayer in the Time of Trouble. And our main text is taken from Psalm 50 and verse 15. And it reads as follows Call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. My listening friends, this text has a promise from God telling us that when we are confronted with trouble, to call upon our Heavenly Father, and He will deliver us from all the challenges that confronts us. We are reminded, however, that we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and show while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. This is God's recognition to his relationship to us, that he is our heavenly father, our protector, and our very present help in time of trouble. And so as a father, he loves us, and he has our best interest at heart. It is one manifestation of a paternal love and condescension, God's invitation ought to be proclaimed from the housetops. It ought to be heralded throughout the whole world. The day of trouble begins when man is born and continues to remain until death. Job chapter 14, verses 1 and 2 states, Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fled also as a shadow, and continueth not. The troubles of man come from the troubler, even Satan, who troubled Job. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 12, God sends a warning 
to the inhabitants of the earth. He said, Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And so we see here in First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, informed us to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. God's warning to the earth is to be watchful, to be resolute, because the devil is full of wrath, and he's coming to planet earth to kill and to destroy. And what a day of trouble it will be just before the end comes. And so we see in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1, it presents a synopsis of the type of trouble that lies ahead and how God's people will be rescued from it. The word of God states, and at that time, Shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people? And there shall be a great, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be written in the book. My listening friends, our present troubles will seem very light compared to the time of trouble before Christ comes for his waiting saints. Let us be reminded of Psalm 50. And verse 15, the word of God states, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. This is a promise we can fully rely on. Here we have prayer as heaven's chosen channel between us, and God. That gracious invitation from the Lord recognizes that the children of men are in for trouble one time or another. The invitation to call upon the Lord and that he will answer is a promise from the God who cannot lie. The Apostle Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2, wrote, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. A promise of deliverance, where Daniel and his friends were in trouble, and the Lord delivered them. From the burning fiery furnace. Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 to 22, and, and chapter 6, verses 10 to 23. In Acts chapter 27, verses 24 through 44, the Apostle Paul and his friends were in trouble while sailing on their way to Rome. They encountered a severe storm, dashing all hopes of reaching a shore alive. 
In verse 24, however, Paul was assured by an angel saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that shall that sail with thee. God kept his promise. Paul and all the men that were with him in the boat, their lives were spared. What a promise from our Heavenly Father in the day of trouble. God is faithful. God never reneges on his promise. He always comes through for his people. Please note, my listening friends, some key areas regarding God's promises to his children. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Did God keep his promise? Absolutely he did. And so we see in Genesis chapter 21 and verse 5, the Bible reads, And Abraham was about a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Numbers 23, 19, and 20 reveals the character of God. The Bible states, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? This is his word, his word of honor, a revelation of his character declaring that his promises are true and amen. When God makes such promise, such a promise, he seals it with his honor. And so we see here in Matthew 25 and verse 35. The word of God states, For I was unhungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. So James 1 and verse 17 assures us as follows. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variable, variableness, neither shadow of turning. And so we see here in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, the Apostle Peter declared, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Peter referenced God's promises as great and precious. And indeed, they are. Because they are show and they are for our good. God speaks to us by the history of divine deliverance in all ages. He reveals to us a wonderful promise in Psalm 34, verses 5 through 7. The word of God states, they looked upon him and were lightened, and their faces 
were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped, wronged about them that fear him, and delivered them. These wonderful promises in the day of trouble. We must create total reliance upon the Lord in all dire circumstances. When we find ourselves inundated with problems on every side. When we find ourselves in challenging situations. Be assured, my listening friends, God is a very present help in time of trouble. And he said, Lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Job, who was troubled, said in chapter 13 and verse 15, Though he slays me, though he slays me, yet I will trust him. The Apostle Paul addressing the issue of temptation in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13 and 14. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is come to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, will with, te, with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Verse 14, he said, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. God is telling us to flee from idolatry. Also, the Lord allows us to pass through the trouble so that we may learn to lean upon him and not on our own devices. Because my brothers and sisters, if we lean on our own devices, we certainly will fall, we will fail. And therefore, God is saying that we must lean upon him. Moreover, the Lord allows his children to pass through trials and difficulties to purify us from sin and to pre prepare us for glory land. Isaiah 48 and verse 10, the Lord, through the prophet Isaiah wrote, Behold, I have refined thee but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. And so my, bro my brothers and sisters, as we go through the li this life, be assured that we will be challenged, but God's promise is to make it better for our spiritual well-being. The such deliverance brings responsibility. The word of God declared in Numbers chapter 20, verses 10 and 11. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, that is Moses, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch for you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he struck the rock twice, and the water came gushing abundantly, and the congregation drank, and the beasts also drank. The Lord was not pleased. The Lord was not pleased. And he spoke unto Moses and Aaron. Because you believed me not to sanctify me, 
in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given thee. This is where Moses and Aaron failed by disobeying the Lord. They failed to glorify God in the presence of the children of Israel. What a missed opportunity. Numbers 20 and verse 8 revealed where Moses and Aaron disobeyed God. The, God, the word of God declared, take the rod. God is speaking to Moses now. He said, take the rod and gather thou the assemble together, thou and Aaron thy brother. And speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and the beast. That was the instructions from God. Did God make a promise to Moses and his brother Aaron to speak to the rock? And he shall give forth the water? Absolutely, God made that promise to Moses and Aaron. Did Moses speak to the rock as instructed by God? Absolutely no. He did not speak to the rock as instructed by God. He struck the rock twice and water gushed out from it. Did God keep his promise to provide water for the children of Israel? Yes, he did. Even though Moses was disobedient, God still allowed water to come through uh, so that the people of, so that the Israelites and the animals uh, could have had water. Was God glorified in the presence of Israel? No, he was not glorified in the presence of Israel. It was a missed opportunity by Moses and his brother Aaron to glorify God in the presence of the children of Israel. That would have ultimately draw the congregation unto God. Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, king of Judah, was sick unto death. And through the prophet Isaiah, God told him to set his house in order, for he shall die and not live. Hezekiah prayed and cried unto the Lord. Hezekiah recapitulated the things that he had done for him, how he was obedient to the Lord, and he followed the statutes and the laws that God had put in place for the children of Israel. And God, however, heard the prayer of Hezekiah. And God, did, God added 15 more years to his life. And God healed him. And so we see here, we ask the question, did God kept, keep his promise? Yes. God healed King Hezekiah and added 15 more years to his life. And so we see in the process of time, the king from Babylon sent visitors to visit King Hezekiah because he heard that the king was very sick. But before the king, before King Hezekiah testify about God's goodness and how the Lord had healed him and has add, added 15 more years to his life, 
He took the visitors from Babylon on a tow to his palace, showing them his riches and his armament. Did the king glorify God before the heathen visitors? No, he did not. Instead of, instead of glorifying God, he took the visitors around the palace and was showing them everything that he had. It was a missed opportunity by King Hezekiah to lift up God in the presence of the heathen visitors. You know, my brothers and sisters, when God delivers us, he has a reason and a purpose in mind. And that is what we should show forth. The praises of our deliverer. If God has done something for you, it is imperative that you lift him up and you tell others what the Lord has done for you. Too often, my listening friends, too often, we fail in that regard. When God has blessed us with wealth, when we excel in our educational pursuit, get a promotion on our jobs, we should never fail to give God the glory. The first thing that should be coming out of our, out of our mouths is thanking God for what he has done for us and telling others especially those who do not know him. How good God is. How faithful God is. How merciful God is. Because when I was having challenges with my examination, God enlightened my mind, and God helped me, and I was able to pass my exam. When I couldn't find a job, God made a way for me where there was no way. And so it is important that when God blesses us, that we tell others. That we tell others what he has done for us. And we should, it should not be hid under a bushel. By telling others, others are saying, if God can do it for you, he can also do it for me as well. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us be mindful to glorify God. Use every opportunity to lift his name up in the presence of people. So people could know that we serve a mighty God who is faithful, who is true, and who have high regard for his children and what he has done for us. And so as I conclude... I just want to let us be mindful that God indeed is a merciful God. He keeps his promise. He never reneges on his promise. He always comes through for us. And if there is anyone we can trust, he's our heavenly father. Because he's a good God, he's a faithful God, and he's a merciful God. And so I pray tonight, today that... The word spoken would help you to understand the importance of glorifying God and lifting his name up so others can be drawn unto him. And so let us pray as we conclude this meeting. Father in heaven, we praise you for who you are, a loving God merciful in all thy ways, ever so faithful and ever so true. A God whom we can depend on in good times and in bad times. A God who has promised that he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. We thank you for the many promises you have placed in your word. That you go to prepare a place and if you go, you will come again to receive us unto yourself. That wherever you are, we will be with you. 
We ask you, God, God, that you will continue to bless us. And that you would empower us with your spirit. Our visit, visiting our friends who are in Radio Land, who are listening over the web, we ask your blessing upon them. We pray for those who are sick, and those who are hurting, those who are having financial difficulties. Father, we pray that you would make a way for them where there is no way. That you would provide for them the means whereby they can be sustained. Touch those who are sick. Bring healing to the sick. Those who are going through different challenges, dear God. I pray that you would reach out and help them in their situation. And so, Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. And we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. 